There is no doubt about it. Keyword research strategy is still one of the most important parts of selling KDP low content books on Amazon in 2022. Keywords are so important that they can boost or reduce your entire rankings. In other words, to succeed with Amazon KDP, you need to find right keywords and spend time on keyword research. What are the right keywords exactly? Do you need any paid tools or Chrome extensions to find them? In my opinion, no, you don't need. This video will teach you everything you need to know about Amazon KDP keyword research step by step without using any paid tools or Chrome extensions. Keep watching to learn my free KDP keyword research strategy. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I talk about how to make money online by self-publishing no content and low content books on Amazon and create passive income from scratch. If this sounds something that you might be interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Before starting to talk about my step-by-step -step KDP keyword research strategy, I would like to clarify the definition of different keyword types and keyword match types for e-commerce. We can divide keyword types into three main categories, head, body, and the long tail. Let's start with head terms. These are usually single word keywords with lots of search volume and competition. Examples of head terms for KDP low content books are notebooks or journals. Because searcher intent is not very clear, head terms usually don't convert to sales very well. Someone searching for notebooks might be looking for a college rule notebook, wide rule notebook, notebook for school, or notebook for work. On the other hand, body keywords are 2 to 3 word phrases that get decent search volume but are more specific than head keywords. Keywords like notebooks college rules or notebooks for women are examples of body keywords. These almost always have less competition than head terms. The last category for keyword types is long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are long 4 plus word phrases that are usually very specific. Phrases like notebooks college ruled 8.5 by 11 and composition notebooks college ruled 8.5 by 11 are examples of long tail keywords. These terms don't get a lot of search volume individually. But when you add them together, long tails make up the majority of searches online. And because they don't get searches for that much, long tail terms usually aren't very competitive and convert to sales better. Keyword match types. Many people think that keyword match types is only related to ad campaigns on Amazon or Google. However, what most people don't realize is that the keyword match types that you use in your title or subtitle have a bearing on the organic search results you achieve. That's why, first of all, I would like to define each match type to let you understand the logic of search engines better. The three keyword match types are broad, phrase, and exact. If you are using Amazon ads, you should be familiar with these terms. However, as I said, they are also important for organic search results. I will give an example about it at the end of this section. The first keyword match type is broad match. If you choose broad match in your ads campaign, the search term will match if it contains all the keyword terms in any order. Broad match also includes the plural form of the keyword, related searches, and other variations that are close to the keyword. As an example, if your broad match keyword is kids school notebooks, your ads may appear in search results for school notebooks for kids. However, it won't be shown if any customer type kids notebooks as the word school is missing. The second keyword match type is phrase match. With phrase match, your ads may appear when a customer searches for either your exact phrase or sequence of words in your keyword. It is more restrictive than broad match and will generally result in more relevant placements for your ads. Phrase match also includes the plural form of the keyword. 
Example, if your phrase match keyword is kids school notebooks, your ads may appear in search results for kids school notebooks for girls. However, it won't be shown if any customer type school notebooks for kids, as this is not in the same order as the keyword term. The third keyword match type is exact match. With exact match, shopping queries must appear exactly as the keywords advertiser selects. But only searches that include all of the words in the exact same sequence will be eligible for impressions. The search query needs to be in the same order and cannot contain additional words. The exact match is the most restrictive match type but can be more relevant to a search. The exact match also includes the plural form of the keyword. Example, if your exact match keyword is kids school notebooks, your ads will be shown in search results for kids school notebook. However, it won't be shown if any customer type kids school notebooks for girls as this contains additional words. Okay, I explained the effects of keyword match types for Amazon ads. However, if you check KDP Help Center, you will understand that they are also important for organic search results. They say that, combine keywords in the most logical order. Customer, search for military science fiction, but probably not for fiction science military. It means that, they give more weight to the exact match and phrase match. Therefore, you should better to put your keywords in your title according to Amazon auto suggestions without changing the order of these words. As the auto suggested keywords were previously searched by customers frequently, you may have more chances to match with customer search queries. What is the keyword research? Keyword research is the practice of researching the popular words and phrases that Amazon customers type into the Amazon search engine and include them strategically in your title, subtitle, backend keywords, product description, so that your product appears higher on a search engine results page. Here is my free KDP keyword research methodology step by step. Step 1. Creating a buyer persona. A buyer persona is a fictional person who represents your ideal customer or a portion of your audience. That's why the creation of a buyer persona is a good step to start your KDP keyword research. It is also very helpful when you are creating a book cover, because once you define your target audience, it will be easier to decide the color of your book cover and illustrations on it. There is a lot of information on buyer personas around. However, it is better to keep it as simple as possible, especially for low content books. In order to identify potential buyers for your books, you need to answer some questions about them. You can start with demographic based questions like gender, age, education, employment status, professions. For example, what are their genders? What are their ages? What is the highest degree or level of school they have completed? What is their current employment status and professions? Employed full-time, student, retired. Beside the demographic-based questions, we should ask more questions to know our target audience better. Challenges. What are their pain points? Health. Time. Interest. What are their hobbies? Sport. Music. For what purpose do they need your book? Is it for work? School? Which trim size or cover do they prefer? Do they prefer leather size? Do they prefer hardcover? What problems does your product solve in their life? Time management, writing skills, healthcare follow-up. Let's meet James. James is a 10-year-old 4th grade student who loves basketball. Unfortunately, he lost one of his line notebooks yesterday in school and needs a new one. 
His parents know that he writes pretty big and they remember that his teacher advised him to use wide ruled and letter sized ones in the school subpilots previously. By this description, you know James age, gender, passions and pain points. All of this information helps you place him in a category in your mind. My question is, how you would search notebook for James if you were James' parents? Just stop the video now, check on Amazon.com and write in comments how you search a book for James. Which keyword phrases did you use and did you find some good products for him? Let me know in the comment section below. Step 2. Amazon Auto Suggestion As soon as the Amazon algorithm see the first keystroke, it is ready with instant suggestions and a comprehensive set of search results. This feature is very helpful for customers but also for sellers. Because it works like a real free Amazon keyword research tool. Of course, if you use it properly and it provides you with almost all the keywords necessary to put your title, subtitle and backend keywords. First of all, before doing keyword research with Amazon Auto Suggestion, either log out and clear your cache or open Amazon in an incognito window to avoid any product suggestions that may come up from your previous searches. To browse in a new incognito window on Google Chrome, Click on the three vertical dots in the upper right corner, then choose New Incognito Window. Also, don't forget to enter a US zip code before starting if you are not in United States. Now we are ready to gather auto suggested keywords. Go to Amazon.com and enter one of the keywords you found during persona creation. If you check my previous videos, I showed how to make line pages in Adobe Illustrator and shared a free template link to download. Therefore, let me show this method for the line notebook niche to help the ones who downloaded this template. When you start typing line notebook in Amazon search box, you get a list of suggestions. These suggestions are the actual queries that customers have used in the past to buy products on Amazon. It means that they are the buyer keywords. Therefore, the related ones with your product must be in your title and subtitle. I have to remind you that when you do keyword research with Amazon Auto Suggestion, you need to work systematically and patiently. After having auto suggestions for your search term, first of all, take a screenshot. Then copy it to a spreadsheet and write down the relative keyword phrases with your book into the first column of the spreadsheet. Even though we don't know the exact search volumes of these keywords, both search volumes and competition must be very high for them. Therefore, we should better dig more to find low competition keywords. Start working through every possible variation of your keyword plus each letter of the alphabet to discover low competition keyword ideas. Each letter that you enter may return new suggestions of a long tail keywords. So let's start with the letter A. Type line notebook space A. If you get new suggestions, take a screenshot and record the new suggested keywords. Continue with the letter B. Type line notebook space B. If you get new suggestions, take a screenshot and record. But it is not enough. You need to research more these keywords to find long tail keywords with less competition. 
let's make an example with the keyword phrase line notebook 8.5 by 11. Take a screenshot and record these long tail keywords into the new column. I named this column as long tail keywords. Continue to do alphabetical search by adding each letter to the end of this keyword phrase to see if you can find more long tail keywords or not. Start with the letter A as usual. Type line notebook 8.5 by 11 space A. Take a screenshot and record. Sometimes you may come across long tail keywords that are not started with your search term. The suggested keywords may also end with your search term. As an example, if you type line notebook 8.5 by 11 space B, you get a suggestion like blank line notebook 8.5 by 11. These are also very important information for us to understand how the customers search these products because we aim to find some exact match search terms to use in our titles and subtitles. When you finish this job for all the keywords, now we have to check the search results of each keyword. For example, if we check the keyword phrase line notebook 8.5 by 11, there are only 1000 search results. Many people say that if the search results are around 1000, it's a very good niche. But is it true? It depends. We need to check some other things in the search result page to understand if it's a good niche or not. Let's check. Normally, this is a very broad search term. And there must be more results than 1000. So when I face with such a situation, first of all, I check if there are any KDP self-published books on the first pages or not. Of course, I will not consider the sponsored ones. Let's check if there is any organically ranked KDP books on the first page. There is one here. Let's check when it was published. It was published in 2018. It has lots of reviews and the ratings are fine. Bestseller ranks are also look good. Let's check if there is any other one on the first page. Yes, one more here. This one was published in 2017 and also has a good ratings. Turn back and check if there is any other one. Okay, another one here. Also published in 2017 and again with lots of ratings. Let's check the second page. There are no KDP self-published books here. So how can it be possible? Why there are very less search results for this search term? And why we can see only 3 KDP books on the first 3 pages? As I explained in my previous video, many factors influence product rankings. In my opinion, one reason can be the ranking weight of the FBA products for this case. If it is very high for this keyword, we may see only a few KDP books. On the other hand, the ones on the first page were published in 2017 and 2018. And obviously, they may have a very good sales history and sales velocity. That's why their product score seem to be enough high to appear on the first page of the search results. Furthermore, Another reason can be related to the categories, so we never know, but it is the current situation for today. Don't forget that current ranking weight calculations for any search term can be changed tomorrow. And if you check after watching this video, you may see different search results. As you see in this example, looking just the search results and BSR rankings are not enough to understand if it's a good niche or not. You should check many points before investing your time in a new product. 
If you haven't watched my previous video about Amazon algorithm, I suggest you watch it. It may help you understand the ranking factors and the product score calculation. Ok, let's check another keyword and analyze the search results. Type line notebook 8.5 by 11 120 pages on the Amazon search bar. Again, we have 1000 search results. However, this time we see more self-published KDP books on the first page of the search results. Again, it is better to check some of them in detail to understand if we can rank our product on the first page. We can start with this unrated one. This one was published in 2019. And BSR is not very high. Let's check also the second one. It was published about a month ago in 2022 and no BSR data. It means no sales so far. I think targeting this keyword is a better idea than the previous one. At least we have a KDP book without a BSR on the first page and also the other BSRs are not very good. In my opinion, if you publish a book with this keyword, you can start your journey from the first or second page easily and it seems that a couple of sales will bring you upper rankings on the first page for this search term. So that's it. I hope you understand the logic of using the Amazon auto suggestion. Let's go to the third step which is Google Keyword Planner. Step 3 Google Keyword Planner New analysis reveals that more than 70% of consumers begin their product searches on Amazon. It's a huge amount and it is obvious that the ratio of Google product searches are reducing year by year. However, when you are doing keyword research, you shouldn't underestimate the data Google has. And also, remember that the Amazon listings still rank on Google. Therefore, if you optimize your listing according to Google search result, you may get free external traffic from Google. Google's Keyword Planner is a free tool that shows you estimated search volumes for any word or phrase. To get to the Google Keyword Planner, you have to create a free AdWords account. Even though Google pushes you, you won't need to create any active campaigns or spend any money to use it. You can search on Google how to do it. If I show quickly the Google Keyword Planner, you can start with the main keywords like line notebook to get some keyword ideas. We have more than 500 keywords ideas here. Then on the right, you can refine keywords by filtering according to brand or non-brand or color. Let's exclude the branded searches. Now we have 400 keywords. You don't need to check all. The most powerful feature of Google Keyword Planner is providing the search volumes. But notice that the search volumes you see on Google Keyword Planner do not equal those you will find on Amazon. However, it will give you an idea and you can assume that the volume will be relatively similar. By the way, Amazon doesn't provide any keyword search volume data, so the paid tools develop their algorithm to predict these volumes. Therefore, keep in mind, Paid tools Amazon search volume data may not be 100% accurate also. You just need to use them to have an idea to compare with other keywords. Another way to use Google Keyword Planner is to discover keywords on a specific page. Yes, this can be Amazon product page of your competitor too. I don't want to show here any KDP author's product, so you can just copy the link of the product page here and get the results. Again, like in the search volume, these will not be the Amazon keywords. These will be the keywords that Google finds on this product page. Most of them must be relevant, but as you see, there is some other product information as well on each product page. Like in the compare with similar items section here. So Google Keyword Planner may show you some other brand's name as a keyword here. Therefore, you need to check the results one by one and pick the relevant ones and record them in your file. So basically we are done with Google Keyword Planner. 
Now we can continue with Google suggested keywords. Step 4 Google suggested keywords. As you all know, another easy way to find the keywords is to type your keyword in the Google search bar. When you are researching with the Google search bar, be sure to browse in the incognito window. Also, if you are doing research from another place for another marketplace, do not forget to change your language and region settings from the settings menu. Let's type also line notebook here to see the suggestions of Google. Like on the Amazon search bar, you can also make alphabetical research here by adding each letter to the end of your keyword. This will help you to discover more keywords. Furthermore, if you check out the searches related to the section at the bottom of Google's search results, you will see more related keywords. First type line notebook 8.5 by 11 and search. Then scroll down to the bottom of the page. You will find a list of 8 keywords that are closely related to your search term. If you click one of the searches related to the keywords and scroll down to the bottom of those results, you will see a new list of related keywords. Do you need more keywords from Google? If your answer is yes, type again line notebook 8.5 by 11 in the search bar and search. This time, click the images section. You see a bunch of related terms above the image results and this is another gold mine that Google provides us, even though not many people talking about it. You can also add these keywords to your list. I think it is enough for Google for the moment. Let's continue with competitor keywords. Step 5. Competitor keywords. The easiest way to find your competitor keyword is simply searching for your keyword phrases on Amazon. Try to use long tail keywords that you already found in the previous steps that I mentioned so far. Let's make an example again with the keyword phrase Line Notebook 8.5 by 11. Try to focus on the first three products and also KDP self-published books on the search results page mostly. Try to check all the titles, subtitles and descriptions to see if there is any keyword that you couldn't find in the previous steps. In my opinion, you should have already discovered most of the main keywords in the previous steps. Therefore, you may find new keywords only related to cover designs such as the color of the cover or the illustrations on it. Record them also to understand which colors are selling and what kind of designs people prefer. We can continue with next step. Step 6. Reverse ASIN Another easy and powerful method for KDP keyword research is reverse ASIN search. ASIN stands for Amazon Standard Identification Number. It's a unique identifier assigned by Amazon and you can find an ASIN in two ways. The first one is finding the ASIN in the product URL. And the second one is checking the product information section on the product page. Here you can find the ASIN information. After finding the ASIN that you would like to check, search on Google that free reverse ASIN search tool or free Amazon ASIN lookup. You can find some free websites, they provide a limited number of keywords. Click one of them and check your competitor's ASIN. Reverse ASIN search allows you to look up the top ranking keywords that your competitor's books rank for. I don't want to show or reveal any keywords of someone's book here. Therefore, I advise you to check it by yourself, but you will see information like this about the keywords on these pages. Let's continue with the last and very important step. Step 7. Customer Reviews I believe that if you check customer reviews of your competitor's book, you may find certain keywords that are repeated over and over again. Let's have a look at the reviews of the Amazon choice for the keyword phrase line notebook. If you scroll down to the customer reviews section, you will see that they already show you some of the related keywords here, such as back to school, 
Note taking, take notes, and college student. It may take time to read all of the reviews, but it will help you understand how the customers describe that book. And you may find some surprising keyword options that you didn't think of before. Also, you can learn the strengths and weaknesses of your competitor's book with this keyword research method. And this will bring you some ideas to make your book better than your competitor. In conclusion, I am not against any paid tools for KDP keyword research. If you have a budget, of course, you may prefer to use them to save time. However, I just wanted to show that it is also possible to find out many keywords without using any paid tools or Chrome extensions. I hope this video was worth watching and you learned some new KDP keyword research methods to increase your Amazon KDP royalties. If you think so, Make sure to subscribe and like the video to support the channel. If there are any unclear points, feel free to write in the comment section under this video. See you soon in the next video.